Now, here's the thing. In the world of Phoebes, aka the anime industry, there is this thing called overhyping everything before it even comes out. Basically, animes that are just okay are now once in a lifetime experiences. And that does not sit right with me. And I'm here to restore the balance. And hopefully offend like 80 to 85% of y'all. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Now, I admit my taste in anime is not the best. I'm the kind of idiot to wait for an year for Demon Slayer Season 3 to drop and watch it for like 3 whole months and then complain about how they focused on the wrong fight. Yeah, but I have just enough sanity to see what's mid and what's not. And this is definitely not mid. But this is, and this, and also this. Now, before you come to any conclusions, I'm not the kind of guy to hate everything that's mainstream. My taste is just not mainstream. At least that's what I tell myself. I like popular stuff too, like Demon Slayer, Bocchi the Rock, Hell's Paradise, Wow. So anyways, this is like the top animes that we got for the past 2-3 to three years. This is the cream of the crop, or as the French call it, creme la croppe, that may or may not be made up. And I watched each and every one of them. Yes, all that valuable time that I could have wasted on Skyrim, I dedicated on being a weeb. The important thing here is that weebs are just digital book nerds. That means just like Dune fans were hyped to see Timothy Chamlet being like this for 3 hours, What's in the box? What's in the box? Chainsaw Man fans were hyped to see this part animated. Some of you really need to go outside and talk to people. Real people, not body pillows. But anyways, this creates hype that only nerds understand, thus creating a market bubble which inflames the stock. Now, this is good and dandy until you see the anime for yourself. It's just slightly better than me. There's this mass of nerds praising the anime before it even comes out and soon as the season ends and everybody seems unimpressed, they're like, the manga was better. For real? Now, I'm not one of those old people who yells at teenagers, but I can assure you that two decades ago, anime was far better than this. <laughs> no, they weren't. Shut up. So, back in the 90s, we got an anime called Perfect Blue by Satoshi Kon. This was Oshinoko before Oshinoko, and this was the closest we got to learn about how bad things are about the psychopathic fan base and the actresses who had to endure it. Things are... Yeah, pretty bad. It's basically a horror movie. Psychological horror. Real psychological horror. But the thing is, Perfect Blue wasn't only a horror anime. It had a huge part in connecting cinema to anime, aka this thing had better cinematography than Hollywood. And uh, this horrifyingly dark masterpiece was given an 8 out of 10. Which I think is fair. Right? So in 2023 and Oshinoko was released. Nearly the same storyline but less darker and less gruesome and had zero cinema to it. No improvement in animations or music or SFX, yes I said it. So basically, other than the storyline there is nothing new in the anime, alright? And this thing was rated a 8.7 on IMDb. Now, that's not the real problem. That is a problem but still, it's not the real problem. And for a very short time, this was the highest rated anime of all time. My question is, why? Everybody seemed to think that this was a life-changing experience, but to me, it was nothing more than a 7. Yes, the story was sad, 4 important people were sent straight into the woodchipper in the first episode, and yes, there was a beautiful animation when she died, yes, it had some death. But still, this is so underwhelming. Ice character wasn't even the main character and after an hour she's dead. Yes, I did feel sad. And no, I'm not a psychopath, but this could have been done way, way better. And this whole thing is overhyped for this episode alone. It's like that one kid in school who could do a backflip and nothing else. The rest of the anime is just a high school anime. I would rather shoot my leg than watch another high school anime. They just introduced a character, built it halfway through and didn't even bother with the screen time and sent them straight into the woodchipper. 
Bravo! But Chainsaw Man did it way better. Now, speaking about Chainsaw Man, it isn't any better either. Two seconds ago, I said it was better. Yeah, it, 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 it was better. But still, there are a lot of staggering issues with Chainsaw Man. Now, unlike Oshinoko, Chainsaw Man really has some new and unique stuff. The environment in Chainsaw Man is a significant change and the girls are well written compared to every other anime ever and all in all pretty good. But still, it's bloated like a puffer fish. The manga of Chainsaw Man has a glaring issue about the flow of the story. In terms of flow, they have no flow. The main character is the most bloated character I have ever seen. It's not that deep man, it's just a weird 16 year old. You can find him anywhere these days. And worst of all, every male character seems to be the age old anime trope that we can't seem to get rid of for the past 3 decades. Half of the community has forgotten what happened in the manga because the story has massive holes in it. And the other half of the community keeps gaslighting the rest of the community into thinking that they read too fast. Yes, that's 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 what they do. Anyways, the thing is, this isn't a considerably bad anime, but it certainly doesn't deserve the ratings either. It's something like a 7.5 or an 8. It's nothing more than that. It's like having a perfectly good sandwich with tuna and mayo and coleslaw and cream cheese, but there is this massive hole in the middle, which you know, sucks. Now, MAPPA decided to adopt this as an anime and let's just say creativity drove off of a cliff that day. MAPPA has this mediocre anime art style that they use for every single anime they make. Somehow they made the corporate soulless art style for an anime. That's an achievement, just not a good one. I'm just gonna say it because of the 80-85% to quarter that I have to reach, so yeah, get good. Now, animation wise, it was mid. Don't don't say anything good about it, it was mid, alright, there's nothing good about it. Now, just like Oshinoko's whole reputation is built by the first episode, Chainsaw Man's whole hype was built by the death of power. They just took her behind the barn and... Now, some of you are going to say that it's the genius of Tatsuki Fujimoto what made it possible, but really, it's just taking an opportunity. Think about it this way, you spend years building up a character, giving her the spotlight and screen time and then just one day you feel like chik chik. It's something that you just don't do. Imagine if one day Anya gets poisoned by your needles and just dies on the spot. See what I mean? Yeah. Now, before we get into Spy Family, hey, nice segue, Sekisai. Thank you. Now get out. Go on. Before we get into Spy X Family, which is also mispronounced as Spy Family and Spy Into Family, which is very weird by the way, we need to talk about today's sponsor, Skill Star Wars, Star Wars. We need to talk about Star Wars. Yeah. So, see this little goblin? Yeah, this guy held up that whole franchise for the last 5 years. And the only reason it did was because it's cute. Now, I admit, it's cute. But I also admit I could do a goalkeeper's kick with it. The thing is, cuteness doesn't matter in the long run. It will get boring eventually. You have to have a good story to back it up. And that's the exact kind of thing Spy Family doesn't have. It has a mid story, mid animations, arguably good characters, kind of a good concept and that's about it. It really doesn't have anything of substance, the manga doesn't either, you can't fool me. If this isn't overhype, I don't know what is. And this mediocre piece of artwork gets a whopping 8.5. Now, in comparison, Demon Slayer has a rating of 8.7. Now, Demon Slayer has unarguably better animation, the best the industry has to offer if I say so myself, and a mid storyline, I'm being completely honest here, as you can see, and way better villains. So, in conclusion, I don't think that these animes are necessarily bad. They're good, but still, they don't deserve the top spot. So, yeah. If you guys have any more animes that you want me to ruin, you know what to do. Yeah, that's about it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Bingus Mac Jingus out. Smoke bomb.